Welcome everybody to the Conway Select Board meeting of Wednesday, March 6, 2023. Uh, and at 6.30 p.m. it will become the joint meeting of the Select Board and Finance Committee. Call the meeting to order. First item, approve the minutes of February 27th. Those look very thorough. Very thorough. Very thorough. <laughs> I need to approve the minutes. Second. There are no warrants contrary to the to the impression left by our agenda. Um, meetings attended by select board members, Erica? None for me last week. I need mean, that every day. It's been pretty, pretty, pretty hectic. Um, really, really the only one that I was said about was uh, Was our was our was our community preservation act meeting, and that was that was really unfortunate. Um, some people, some people, some people aren't going to let facts get in the way of their opinions, and there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes and that's a shame. Right. Uh, talk about that a little bit. So get to get to something else, but. Um, Public comments. No. So we're really, we're really here at six o'clock because we have Sean Weaver with us from Northeast IT. Um, and he's going to explain why he's with us and what his relationship is with Conway. And he's going to present a cyber assessment report. Um, and then perhaps something else to do. Is that about right, Sean? Uh, yeah, that, that about covers it. All right. So, um, you got the floor. Okay. Um, first off, I want to thank you guys for uh, giving us this opportunity. And um, let me get my screen share going, and then I'll uh, go over what I have for you and what we did. All right. Um, so we were contacted by the uh, by the town to conduct a network assessment and cybersecurity assessment of. Uh, all your systems to kind of gauge where you guys are in terms of cybersecurity. Uh, we evaluate that against uh, industry accepted best practices, and I'll get into a little bit more detail on what best practices are in a second. Um, and then we come up with a, a scoring system and uh, any mitigation points that, that we find that, that need to be taken care of. Um, one of the things I have to say with with town of Conway, uh, we we do this with a lot of towns, and you guys are probably in the best shape that we've seen out of most of the towns that we do. Um, there's only a handful of uh, mitigation points that we found, but overall, you guys are are doing pretty good. So uh, that's a a big kudos to you and and to uh, Roy, who I understand is the guy who handles your uh, current IT. And Roy is with us. Roy is with us right now. <laughs> and he's nodding in approval at, about the, regarding the compliments that were just given to him. Yeah, um, no, we we were very surprised. Um, we we rarely see towns in uh, in anywhere near as good of a shape as as Conway is. So that's uh, that's a very good thing. All right. So the. Um, the agenda, like I said, I'm going to go over what we define as, as best practices, a quick overview of some of the systems that you're currently using, then uh, what the findings were on our, our uh, assessment, and then what the mitigation plan should be for that. So best practices, um, like I said, they're, they're industry accepted best practices, they, and it comes from a, a variety of sources that, that we kind of gather what should be considered reasonable and, and expected for security. Um, the main driver of that is NIST, uh, but we also look at things like HIPAA. We look at what Microsoft recommends for normal operation within a, a network. Um, and then we also draw on our own experiences that we've seen from other towns where there can be security holes and things that, uh, that sometimes can get overlooked. Um, so, those are where we come up with the concept of what standards we're going to be evaluating against and making sure that you have proper uh, things in place to uh, 
mitigate any potential risks that, that you would have. So the uh, systems overview. So currently you guys are using many industry standard systems. You use Microsoft 365 for email, which is a fantastic email platform. It's uh, what we typically sell for our customers here at, at Northeast IT as well. Um, they have a dedicated government cloud, which is all US-based data centers, US-based uh, technicians, and they've really stepped up to the plate in terms of making sure that they're the provider of choice for municipalities. Um, I also noticed you guys are using Duo multi-factor authentication on most of your workstations. Uh, a lot of cyber uh, liability insurance policies are starting to require multi-factor authentication being used. So you guys are a little bit ahead of the curve there. Um, Sentinel-1 for your EDR, which is, uh, it's antivirus, but it goes beyond antivirus. Um, uh, EDR system also will uh, detect uh, behavioral patterns as well as signatures where traditionally antivirus only looks for, for uh, signatures. Uh, Sentinel-1 is again, one of the industry standards. It's actually the one that we use here at, at Northeast IT. It's a very, uh, very strong EDR system. And uh, all your networking equipment is provided by Ubiquity Networks, which again, industry standard company, uh, another one that we do sell here at Northeast IT. Um, and uh, one that has uh, great trust in, in the market. And uh, Ubiquity is, is unique in that they tend to have a lower price point than a lot of their competitors, but provide as robust of equipment as like a Cisco or, or some of the higher price stuff out there. Um, so again, good, good job on, on all this. Um, nothing significant there. Uh, now when we get into the findings. So the uh, system that we run everything through, it, it generates a score. But simply looking at that score, it can kind of be scary because it tends to generate high numbers. But when you start breaking down why it's actually generating those numbers, a lot of times it turns out to not be as scary as it, as it looks on the surface. Um, so the score goes from a scale of zero being the best to 100 being the worst. Uh, for your network, you scored a 95, and for security, you scored 25. And uh, I'm going to go into the details on, on what we found and why the scores are, are where they are. So on the network side, uh, it was really only a couple of little things that was driving the score up that high. Uh, there was some updates missing on, on some computers, um, both some routine security updates that had been missed, as well as a couple major uh, operating system updates were missing. Uh, in the complete report, which uh, Vernique has and can make available to, to you guys, it actually goes into details uh, as far as specifically what computers were, were missing, what patches. Um, there's also two computers that are running out of date versions of Microsoft Office. Uh, obviously, the, the risk there is when uh, software is out of date, it's no longer going to be receiving uh, security updates. So if there is a security hole that's found, it's not patched. So it, it presents a potential access point on your network for, uh, for a bad actor or something in that case, um, which is what that last thing says. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So uh, se several of the minor findings also indicated the need to do some routine cleanup of your Active Directory. Um, that's the system that manages your access to your network as well as uh, your centralized management for both your users and computer accounts. Uh, there are a lot of inactive computers and inactive user accounts that were identified within uh, Active Directory. So that, that should be cleaned up. That's a relatively low priority thing. Um, but still having user accounts and inactive computer accounts sitting there, that does present uh, potential areas for exploit. Um, but again, that, that's low priority. The security updates are really the, the biggest thing that drove the score up to, uh, to the 95, and that's very easy to, uh, to remedy. On the security sides, uh, no major findings. Uh, the only two things of note is 
Uh, none of your user passwords are set to expire. Uh, this really is more of a question of uh, what you guys want for, for your internal policy. Typically, we'd say that passwords should expire every 90 days. However, because you guys have already implemented multi-factor authentication for your uh, workstation sign-ins, it's not as critical or as uh, normal of a thing as it, as it used to be because you have that uh, second factor that somebody would need to pass. So even if a user's password got compromised, the password alone isn't gonna do anything as far as access to your systems. Uh, there's also a Wi-Fi network that came up when I uh, when I did did my uh, network assessment that had no password. I couldn't really find any more detail on on that network, and it may not even be something that's being generated from your equipment. Just something that when I ran my scan, the the computer was able to find it. Um, so I, I just threw it in here as a note because it was something that came up when I did my scan. But you know, if it's like one of the neighboring buildings to the town hall that's broadcasting it. Obviously, you guys can't do anything about that. Um, if it is town equipment that's broadcasting that, though, it really should have a password on it. Um, when I connected to it, it there weren't any uh, network shares available or anything like that. So there's no significant uh, security risk shown to it. And like I said, it may not even be the town equipment that's broadcasting that one. Uh, so the mitigation plan for you guys, really simple, because there wasn't a lot that, that was found. Uh, the missing updates and uh, missing patches can uh, be taken care of simply by running Windows updates. Um, your Windows 10 operating system should all be running at a minimum of uh, Windows 10 release 21 H2. So Microsoft releases major operating system up updates uh, two times a year. And they uh, only support those updates for, I believe it's a two-year period um, before they're, they're considered out of date. Um, again, those are free updates run through Windows Update, so very easy to get the computers up to the, uh, the 21H2. Uh, through Microsoft 365, you guys should all have access to uh, the current versions of Microsoft Office. Uh, the two computers that were running the unsupported versions, uh, you can simply remove the version with the potential caveat that if there's any sort of software or something running that requires that older version of Office, then uh, obviously that version is going to have to stay on there. Um, and that's just going to be a, a risk that's required by software. Um, I already mentioned the unsecured uh, Wi-Fi network that was detected, and then just cleanup of Active Directory should happen. Uh, stale computer accounts and, and user accounts should be removed. Um, best practices would say that uh, computers and, and users every 60 to 90 days um, after a account's been disabled, it should probably be removed from, from Active Directory. Um, so, a couple of the other concerns that came up uh, during the, the investigation. Uh, it was indicated when I was uh, doing my interviews that uh, Roy is a one-man shop and there was concern about continuity, which I understand some of that's already been mitigated and uh, Vernique's been uh, given or, or is going to be provided a, a list of uh, username and password. So in the event that something was to happen to Roy, uh, there'd be able to be a, a orderly transition to uh, keep the town running. Um, but that that's always a concern. However, Roy's doing a good job. You know, I, we, we'd love to be able to beat him up and uh, make a play for, for your, uh, your business and everything. But honestly, he, he's doing a good job as he is. So um, the other big thing is the town servers. I'll just use. interrupt you there, just to let you yep. know that you have to beat me Conway to beat up Roy. We only we can beat up our own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing of note is the uh, town servers are using Unix, which is not as common, especially in smaller networks. Uh, you do see it a lot in bigger networks. It's functional. There's no 
security risk or anything like that with that. Um, one of the biggest potential issues with using something like Unix would be, again, if something happened to Roy and you ended up having to uh, quickly get somebody in to administer it, it's uh, less common and usually people who have Unix admin experience uh, come at a higher price point. So that's uh, something to be aware of. But Unix has uh, no licensing costs, and I'm sure it was probably a uh, cost savings measure why uh, why the free BSD was, was used when the servers went in. And again, it functions. There's there's no major concern there from a security standpoint. You're actually probably better off than you would be with the Microsoft operating system. But uh, just looking at it from a viewpoint, if somebody had to come in to, uh, to take over for Roy in, in that event, um, it could end up costing the town more money on, on that side. Um, so that's uh, that's my report. And like I said, the, the complete report and everything was uh, made available to Vernique. I'm sure she can uh, distribute, distribute that out to you guys if uh, anyone wanted to read the whole thing. But those are the, the key takeaways and could open the floor for any questions if anyone has anything. Key takeaways is Roy's doing a good job. That's a that's a good takeaway. Doing yep. a great job. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's <laughs> especially especially as we as we head into town meeting, where every year Roy has to stand, you know, has potentially stand up in front of town meeting, hat in hand, and justify his the the the, the budget line item. Um, you never know who's going to stand up and ask him to do that. And that's this is this is an outside neutral. Uh, you know, just someone just out there calling balls and strikes, and uh, and uh, you know, so this is a good thing for Roy <laughs> and for the town. This is this is good. So thank you, thank you, Roy. I know why I came. There you go. No, actually, I didn't. I, I, I didn't know what he was going to say. I, I, <laughs> kind of on the back. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's all appreciated. No, everybody so, needs a pat on the back once okay. in, in this spot. You don't get too many. <laughs> Ask it, Sean. Very good. Very good. Then I can. I, and it's good to know that we can get much better scores with just hitting the update button. Not even I know how to hit the update button. Yeah. So, how often do we have this assessment performed? This is the first, to the best of my knowledge. I mean, technology services, you, you guys will know more than I about how long it's been going on in town, but, you know, these things are fairly new for a small town. Mm -hmm. I mean, our budget only goes back to, what, 2017, 2018, in terms of really taking on. So, um, and obviously, Roy's done an amazing job of getting us where we need to be, and not only that, but in great shape. So, you know, that's off to Roy. <laughs> What was the catalyst for doing it now, doing this assessment now? Um, honestly, it can put us into a good step for getting a grant in case there's any equipment that we need in future. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having Great. this assessment done as a formal assessment, which is being paid for by, by a grant. Don't forget to send the invoice, Sean. Yep. <laughs> oh, so we got a grant to do this assessment Correct. as well. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> Great. And, and how do we select Sean as the vendor? Uh, Northeast IT, to be honest, was recommended to me by a bunch of local tenants. Okay. So who would use Sean um, mm -hmm. or Northeast IT and mm -hmm. yeah, and, and then they've done that kind of work for them before. So. As, a, as a company. As a company. Just we, be Sean, though. It wouldn't just be Sean, though. Otherwise, there would be continuity of business concerns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, as, as a company, Northeast IT has a large footprint up in the uh, the hill towns. We manage the IT for a, a lot of the smaller towns up your way. So I'm assuming, in all honesty, Sean, that we don't really, at the moment, need to go for that grant for equipment upgrades. Or if we do, you and I can talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so the community compact grant for equipment upgrades and, and stuff, there needs to be a specific uh, goal in mind. So it, it can't just be, you know, you need to upgrade a couple of computers. It needs to be for backup services or for a particular piece of software. Um, you know, one of the big things that we've seen over the last couple of years is, uh, upgrades to uh, Patriot systems, you know, for SS Pro or um, 
QDS is another big system that we're seeing lately, which we can get the grant to cover the um, hard costs associated with those kinds of upgrades. So if you have any, any software systems that you're looking to implement, then we could probably piggyback some computer upgrades and, and little things like that on top of the software deployment with the uh, Community Compact Grant. The thing to remember with the Community Compact Grant is you can only you can only apply for it every other year. So if you get it this year, you can't apply for it again next year. You have to wait a year. Um, but we've been very successful at at getting it for a lot of a lot of the towns up your way. But of course, like I said, a lot of them are in a lot worse shape than than you guys are. So we are looking, and you and Roy can let me know if this is something we need to look to. But in a few years, we're hoping to move the offices that are currently located in the town offices, myself, um, the treasurer's office, my assistant accountant, over here to the town hall. Mm -hmm. And if that would require some kind of upgrade of equipment that we could think about in advance and apply for a grant, then we should keep that in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's something that we could uh, configure around either maybe a security need or even a backup need of you know, consolidating everything into one building. So it's it's all centrally located. Um, we could probably petition the state for some grant money to cover that. Um, now the community compact grant also comes with a expiration date on the funds. You usually need to use them within, I think it's six months of them being issued. So if you weren't ready to, to move forward immediately, then this wouldn't be the year to apply. You'd wanna wait till next year. Right. No, definitely not this year, but just wanted to keep that in the back of my mind for when things move forward, hopefully. Yep. Thank you, Sean. Yep. Not a problem. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to drop off, but um, if you guys end up coming up with any questions that you think of after the fact, uh, Veronique has my email and you're more than welcome to uh, to shoot me a message. All right. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank you. Much. Right. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so do we just go a couple other items? It's not 6 30 yet, but, no, but they haven't formed. And yeah, Jen is not here, but it's yeah. up to you. I mean, there's only four of those accounts, so we can discuss our if we want, or because they're well, we, the meeting was scheduled for 6 30. Yeah, so I would wait until 6 30. Yeah, right. Um, so there, we have one other item on new, on new, on new business, and it might be better to wait for Chris next week for this. There's no super urgency on this, but that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah I forgot he wasn't going to be. Yeah, absolutely. You want to? So you're moving to table it? Yeah. Yes. I move that we table it then <laughs> yes. I, until next week. There you go. We'll because second it. Uh, even though I don't, I don't think we we vote on that. I think that's actually the chair's discretion. Okay. But, but, <laughs> but let's vote on it anyway, since that, that is. In the spirit of democracy and fairness, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. all in favor, aye. All right, all right. stable right. till next week. And, um, yeah, uh, we have what we can talk about. Um, is a couple of items in the mail. I'm going to move up a couple of mail items. Um, and the one is that. DCR Wood Bank, and um, and the, the, so that there is a new the DCR has got a bunch of new state and federal money. They have a new hire um, who is in charge of creating wood banks in towns or helping towns create. Um, Buckland has been the leader in this, and Leverett has done it already. And basically, it's a town highway department who is always dealing with logs and wood, mm -hmm. um, instead of chipping it and disposing of it, they bring it back to where the highway, the highway department and stack it, just leave it on the side and then volunteers uh, um, process it and make it firewood. And it's, um, and, and, but there's quite a bit of grant money available. Um, I spoke with the individual Today, actually, for a while, um, and and we're going to have a meeting. They're coming up next Wednesday at ten a.m. at the at the highway department. And um, but at the, you know, 
one of he, he even said, you know, instead of the chipper, um, that that um, they get a log truck or a log trailer and a little grab whatever, a little the grab, mm -hmm. and that there's grant money to get the, the grappling thing. So that the the whole this is just what I'm thinking. What when I because our, our highway boss was like, I just want to be able to deal with the logs once. Yeah, no one have to deal with logs twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if instead of chipping, it can deal with logs with trailer. That's just yeah. still just once. So I, I um, think I'd be concerned. That I don't think one obviates the other. I think the chipper right. is for the smaller stuff. Yeah. And right. then you still are stuck with the logs. So, but but the the thing that really attracted me to the whole is that it's a way of really helping out residents. Um, that because heating the the number of residents that have applied for yeah. emergency heating assistance this year is scary and staggering and um this is you know lots of people have wood stoves but wood's expensive too right and yeah. if, if instead of throwing it away we can use it so sure here's a question find out what it does to what are what's our liability just mm -hmm. because it's pretty hazardous work yeah. right and yeah. It's gonna and, and shoot I, that premium through the roof. You have to. That's my uh, first question as well. It, so I, I'm and, assuming because it's from the state that they have. I wouldn't assume that. Plans. No, no, but <laughs> that, but that this this okay. this is something that the towns that have adopted this have already wrestled with that yeah. and yeah. and, well, it, and, and it fixed it. Certainly, let's find out. So, Otherwise, yeah. it's fantastic. I think it's all for it. Forty five times. Right. Oh, right. I'm a grammar school student. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I said. Yeah, that's what I said. Maybe <laughs> just labor. Great felt sex activity. Uh, maybe you already sell to the seniors to make money off instead of cupcakes and cookies. Right. Uh, I, but I, there, there are several residents that 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 came up, you know, that that alerted us to this right when it was taking place, right when it was yeah. starting out, and um, but and and according to um, the DCR representative, it does it. The total amount of volunteer hours to make it work, like year for a, a, the whole year, was like a hundred hours, um, which which sound, sounded sounds kind of low. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that um. So, but the the thing has been worked out, and we're gonna really get all the details. Sure. Well, I can talk to Buckland and Leverett too. Sure. And, and you know, we can have her on talk to their highway bosses and yeah. Yeah. get their scoop and yeah. talk to town council about the liability. Yeah. I I have a somewhat related question from the finance and from the group. Um, when a resident shows up, or a town business even shows up at the um, at the barn or the highway garage, and they want to fill up their sandy, how is that handled? Like if I show up in my Station in my car. I've got some buckets of like sand. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm shoveling sand in the buckets and I'm putting it in the back. There, there. there is a policy for that, and I know the policy is residents only, small containers only, no commercial use. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so there are no commercial. Uh, there are no sanders per se that use our dirt except for the town. Should not be. There's there should not be. And if there is, you're you're supposed you're supposed to let let us know because um that's against that's against the rules. No, I mean, but the thing is that people have to people have to back their vehicle into that and it's a visible thing. Even if yeah, they so. back their vehicle and they need a piece of equipment to load, to load it. Right. And that's yeah. that's my curiosity. It's just curious. Yeah, no, I I know in the yeah. past there in the past somebody did get in trouble for that. It's not good. Like I remember a few years back. But um, okay. what kind of trouble is that they get into? The, 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 the stockade in the, the, the library. Yes, a stern talking to. Darius <laughs> <laughs> will come up from uh, South Deer to no, Yes, yeah. We should have a policy. I'm not saying I'm for or against anything. I'm just curious because it's never, I never thought about it before. Yeah. And so I. Well, when you're talking about firewood, all of a sudden, it, it, it takes on a whole new well, issue, doesn't it? Because you've got more people that are yeah. interested in, you know, that in larger quantities, and you know, where do you where do you store all that firewood? And well, not just that, but who gets access to who it? Gets access to it? That's who right. gets it? That's what, what are your limitations? On, those on are good problems. Problems. They are. 
They are, but I'd love to see if somebody solved them so I don't have to. Hey, yeah, yeah. I say whoever solves it gets it first. <laughs> the, <laughs> the lower the income, the the first dib, the the the, the yeah. uh, first dibs you got. <laughs> a lot of seniors are getting people getting them in the past. Yeah, yeah. That's also yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, the exactly. older you are, the, so the higher priority you have. I like both of those. Things. Senior council will have a word for other issues. Um. So so that's. That's the one thing. The other. Well, here now. Is it six thirty? Yep. All right. Not exciting slide. So the finance committee would, would we have to vote on anything if it's a grant? I don't. Um. No, not if 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 it ends up being a grant, but I'm yeah. sure we'll be reporting back what. What. And it would cover the uh, the loader, not not a wood chipper. I don't know. I there, there's se there, there's several different, you know, he said one is a federal grant that they work with, and oh. one is a state grant. Oh. Um, right. And then some of it might be town, you might have to front them up, the town might have to front some of the money. Oh, it's reimbursement. Yeah. Reimbursement of the finance money. Yeah. But this cross the water. So. Select board and call the order. I'll call the finance committee to order. I make a motion to call the finance committee. Would you mind meeting with the select board? Second. Thanks. We have Jennifer. Can you see that, Gemma? Thank you. That would be helpful. Yes, I can. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll start with you. <laughs> if you want to go through the, or if you, if you want me, it's up to you. I mean, not a whole lot that's changed, right? Not really. I mean, a little bit in just you know the the generalized cost of things has gone up so i i bumped the different lines up like the maintenance and um you know soft well did i do the soft yeah i went up a little bit on software just because like everything else it's all is going up so um but otherwise there hasn't really been any big changes we're just trying to maintain um you know the ambulance as it is now for at least a few more years until we end up you know at some point in the near future we're gonna have to look into buying a new one um <clears throat> so at this point we're just trying to maintain this one and not make any drastic improvements unless necessary um so for the most part we're holding our own Just Gemma, th thank you so much. You do, you do an amazing job. Your department is always awesome. <laughs> Seriously. Um, Thanks. So I, I did want to just point out on here for those who uh, I was not aware of this until I started this job. It says in the bottom here, minus 25,000 for Article 2. All right. So um, we put in Article 2 every year, just 25,000 flat for the ambulance. Mm -hmm. And then this 30,615 will be a warrant article coming out of ambulance receipts. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make it clear that that's right. it's been done in the past. And actually, I don't know where that formula came from. So do you know, Gemma, where that? I, I don't know. Out? It's been that way as long as I've been on the ambulance. And since I took over as director seven years ago or whatever it was. Like one of those income versus expenses kind of like yeah. but at some point i suppose we could could or should talk about the twenty five thousand and whether that needs to be more raised because i know ambulance receipts is down a little bit this year right you know, i was going to ask yeah. you know, do we know what the do we have any idea what the receipts are going to be i mean i think there's fifty three thousand in there right now we don't i mean we don't know what it ends up being here it all is variable right now what's in there is if this is accurate which it, as of the last time i got a copy of this list it's there's fifty three thousand in there now now um partly why that's lower is because i believe 
last year we moved, I don't remember what the total amount was, but we moved a chunk into the stabilization account. Um, I think there was like 60,000. It was a pretty that, big I don't chunk. Know if that was, yeah, yeah. I mean, we put a, a pretty good dent in the, in the receipts account, um, which typically, I mean, it in the past it, over the years it's the the contribution from the receipts account versus the the standard 25,000 have been close to the same i mean the, the budget's obviously gone up this year a little bit um but it's generally been right around that 50,000 ballpark um so i think as long as we keep you know a, a little bit of a almost I would say maybe close to the equivalent of this you know what we're taking out this year from the receipts account for the budget keep that as like a cushion almost or close to it um and that we seem to be managing to do that fairly well um it looks like this year we got or at the last update on this list there was 26,000 in revenue um into the receipts account, so it's not it's not making a huge amount of money, but it's not, you know, it's it's maintaining, I guess. So it's about all we can do at this. Point. As I recall, <laughs> part of the reason it was doing it in this way was to separate fixed from operational expenses, but there was also the factor. We were automatically saving towards the new ambulance, like over a ten-year mm -hmm. period, and I'm confused as to where that savings is gone because it's taken the uh, fifty-three, fifty-five thousand to run the whole thing, and so when it comes time to replace the ambulance, and we have, a, we have an ambulance stabilization yeah, fund. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's yes. And that's where the 60000 last yeah. year went to. And that's what I was just going to ask Gemma about, because since we did a big chunk last year, I'm a little concerned that we don't seem to have much to put in this year towards the ambulance. So, you know, I wasn't sure whether we should rethink any of this. Interesting. I wonder what a new ambulance costs these days. Yeah, the fire truck's like $650,000. I know it's $600,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think an ambulance is I'm at this point my my best guesstimate is somewhere in the four hundred thousand ballpark. Um I don't know for sure. And I've in the next few months, uh Chris and I are both gonna start kind of reaching out to um New England Fire and the different places that we've done business with before for both the ambulance and the fire trucks and start getting um, an estimate and, and what the time frame is too. Cause I know I talked to a few different builders um, last fall and they said that anything, even, you know, an off the shelf ambulance is two to three years out. So at best, we're probably looking at a few more years that we're gonna need to, you know, keep maintaining our ambulance and also buying ourselves a little bit of time to put money towards um, towards the new ambulance. But and I'm hoping in the next probably six months, I'm going to have a better idea of what the cost is going to be um, and what the timeline is, you know, what we're looking at and how soon we need to make a commitment to whoever, um, you know, and what we need if we have to put a deposit or you know, more of the details as to what we need to do um, going forward and what the, the timeline and the game plan is for um, the new buying a new ambulance. We know how much is in the stabilization now? $223,615.95. How much? $223,000. $223,000. Oh, oh. That's actually halfway to a ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I think, I mean, we can, all things you can, you can make like, left turns in the new ambulance now. We're, we're not in terrible shape. Um, and who knows, maybe price 
chances it will go down. I, I doubt it, but <laughs> but, but Shana, it's also true, right? That legally they, you know, we're, we're at the 10 year mark. So we need to be seriously thinking about ordering, you know, as soon as we can really. Um, I don't know if it's quite soon as we can, or if it's just, I mean, we are due for our inspection with the state this year. Um, I'm expecting to get notified any day of when, you know, when that will be. And I'm hoping I'm going to talk to the inspector then. I mean, they haven't had any complaints about the the condition of our ambulance or or any of our equipment. It's all everything has been maintained as best as we can. Um, so I think for the most part, I think we will be OK for another few years. Um, you know, a few being like two to three. Um, I don't I don't expect them to jump down our throats and say, oh, you have to get a new ambulance next week. Um, but I am going to talk to them about what, how, how rock solid those guidelines of 10 years are. Um, and I think if, you know, things were in worse shape, um, as far as the, the maintenance of the ambulance and the condition of it, then we'd have more, I'd be more worried about it. But right now I'm not, I'm not concerned that they're gonna get mad at us yet. Um, just, just so that you know, Gemma, a uh, couple of weeks ago, our United States Congressman McGovern uh, came here, was sitting right here, and was and was talking to us about wish lists and about what the town needs long term. And I brought up, you know, we yep. we brought up the ambulance, we brought up the fire engine, brought a bunch of different things, and. And you know, he started. He, he got all excited. He was like, "Oh, the ambulance fire department! I I can help you with that." But there's grants, da, da, da. and and <laughs> and and so so we got excited. And um, and I think there was a public meeting where I even said, "Oh, I'm excited. We might get help for this." Uh, and and the next day or a couple of days, he had his staff very professionally follow up with us with exactly what the programs he was talking about. And we looked at them all, and none of them apply to us. None of them are even remotely close to applying to us. Um, we don't meet oh. any of the we don't meet any of the categories. There's no way in heck that like that that they're useful at all. We could get a loan, as I said to the yeah. congressman. Yeah. That's not going to help yeah. us much. But it's USDA. because of USDA. Yeah, right. I looked into those last year for other but, purposes, and our median household income is so high they don't they just we're not even eligible for grants. So yeah. So what I asked is if they could. Well, we consider how they take a beating in these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, despite my best efforts to bring the overall average down, our, our, our income as a town is still too high. So, Gemma, what I'm thinking is that when you get your information, we can circle back with capital planning and talk about when, you yeah. know, when we know we'll need. If it's like, and I'm sure the inspectors are going to know that equi new equipment is two to three years out. So, but if it's if if the ambulance right. is good for two to three years and we're two to three years out, we should be doing that pretty soon. So yeah, I think you know, I think in the grand scheme of things, we're in pretty good shape as far as like I said, the ambulance, it's old, but it's not in horrible shape. It's it's starting to show its age in certain places, but it's still it's still serviceable and it's still, you know, doing what we we need to do and I don't expect it to have any issues getting through inspection, you know, with the state or anything either. So yeah, the, the only thing in your budget yeah, I, will, that I will definitely once I have a little bit more information um, that will I will share that with everyone. The, the one thing I did want to ask you about in your budget was just the, the item for um, new equipment, which just seems to have quite a bit of fluctuation in it. And uh, just, you know, what last year was 6,000 something and expended versus what was budgeted. And this year you're up to, it's 3,000 from last year from 2000. So if you could just talk a little bit about that, because that's just the one number. I'm sorry, which one was that? New equipment. Second from the bottom. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, Jenny, you're, you're breaking up a little bit. I Can you think, I think um, check my internet. We can hear you fine. It's pretty much, it's, you've been frozen for a while. Though. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody wants to see me anyway. It's terrible. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I don't honestly remember what exactly caused that so much um, last year. <clears throat> I know we had a couple of, um, like our pulse oximeter um, got damaged on a call and we had to replace that. And that was a fairly big chunk of money. Um, I, I don't honestly know why that jumped so much in that particular line, unless it was just that I screwed up and put stuff in that line that should have been in a different line, um, which is very possible. Um, All right. If, 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 if it ever dawns on you, just let Ronnie know. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure there's a good explanation. Yeah. I mean, I know uh, the pulse oximeter was last year, and that was a fair. I think that was like 2000 um, or 1800 or something like that. Um, and then we also, I know, had a couple of, you know, we actually we had several cardiac arrest calls, which every time we use our defibrillator, on a call, we have to replace all the batteries, and it has, I think, 18 batteries or something. There, it's some ridiculous amount of batteries um, that are not cheap. So that that kind of stuff, you know, it all adds up um, over time. Um, so I think that was, I think those two factors were a big part of of that jump last year. Else? Well, I have a question. Any, any, are there any additional trains or anything that you can think of that uh, could affect the budget? I'm thinking we had the opioid money, the Narcan, Alexon, big storage equipment, and that stuff. And we want to make sure we're looking at the whole picture so there aren't any unpleasant surprises. No, I mean, for the most part, pretty much all of our training has been. Um, a lot of it ends up being either in house or at a fairly cheap rate. Um, so we haven't, other than the initial, you know, EMT training, and then every two years when we have to do, do our our con ed credits, um, that ends up being a, usually a pretty decent chunk of money for each EMT. To I think it's depending on where we go, it's around two hundred dollars um, or three hundred dollars per person to to get that training done every year um, but for the most part a lot of it we can do um, for a, a fairly low cost um, and then the naloxone and all of that kind of stuff we we've only had to do one or two times and then it's covered in our refresher classes um, as far as any kind of update or protocol changes or anything like that so I thought what you said is just I reminded me just how that the, the the opioid settlement money that we've applied for and got and we're getting thousands of dollars per year for the next decade or something from it. Um, in a few years. Yeah. Uh, Seventeen. Yeah. Uh, that that a lot of that money we can be used to offset your department's expenses, like things like defibrillator batteries. Right. That kind so, of thing. Um, <laughs> So we should we should sit down at some point, Gemma. And okay. Like figure out that yeah, that's sort of what it, that money's intended for. Okay. Yeah, I didn't among realize other, there was that. Among money. other things, <laughs> I, was just, I have to look at the regulations to make sure that it's allowed. I have not studied yes. all of the allowable uses, so. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize it was such a big chunk of money and. That long of time frame and everything. Little chunks from lots of places, and we've been following it and flying everywhere. We have about twelve thousand. Right. We're guaranteed, from what I understand, about seventy-six thousand, but that's over seventeen years. Yeah. 
Okay. So we're going to set up an account this year to save it, and then we'll talk about how we're going to expend it. Yeah. And there might be another settlement too. That's one of the settlements. There's another five that we just yeah. applied for. Yeah. Hmm. No, but I, okay. you know. I don't know. Do you have any further questions? No. I, I, the only question that's stuck in my mind is if we have to replace the ambulance in three years, how do we how do we get the capital budget back up to the four hundred and fifty thousand, five hundred thousand, whatever it needs to be from what it is now? So sometimes you have to have a town meeting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we, we we can do that within. But I know there's another committee that works on this, but. That, that is, that's how it's envisioned that major things like that if you don't have the money mm -hmm. then you, you need to, you need authorization from the town for that for stuff, for stuff like that you, know, you just call a town meeting. Yeah. yeah so well Jim and I will stay in touch about what's you know there needs some well and we'll need more capital and, and yeah as I get more you know more information and numbers and dates and all that kind of stuff um you know, going forward, I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop and hopefully we can figure it out. And who knows, maybe we'll get lucky and prices will drop on everything and we can get a new ambulance for 300000 I don't know. <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> By the time we're ready, it's, yeah. the, it's the COVID brain. It's, it's, I'm just, I'm, I'm fried. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, thanks. Thanks, Jenna. Thanks, Jenna. Thanks, Jenna. 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 Yep. Yeah. No problem. Thanks. Bye. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Which one do you want to reserve fund? So, in America, the legislative comment last time this came up, 10 years. Was it? Is it 10 years now since we? Did the tr we did a truck body, uh, we do ambulance body old truck swap or the other way around. Okay, that's how we got this ambulance. It was not purchased new. And at that time, uh, we did sort of, it wasn't a formal analysis, but I'm sure it'll come up. Some resident will bring it up. Like, do we really want to do this and have this be our headache or do we want to join the regional thing? And invariably, it comes down to response time. I mean, where are you going to get response time except having it an ambulance parked here, unless you can get a third party provider to park the yeah, ambulance? There are more issues. That's a that's a real simplification. There, there are more issues than that. Too. I'm sure there and are. As is, you know, staffing is an issue in our town, and that it, like it's conceivable that we're just going to run out of EMTs. Yes. And we're not going to have a choice. Well, yeah, right. um, yeah, this is this and, is the ideal time to be looking at this but, before you commit to another. And, that, um, ambulance. and this is has nothing to do with the, their competency. They're very competent. But yeah. you should you should know that that we are that the the regional ambulance service, um, South County EMS, right at the bottom of the hill, uh, reaches out to us or on somebody on their behalf reaches out to the select board. I get a call about once a year or so, right. um, and that they that that they originally formed with the idea that we would be in it. Oh, wow. um, so they say, yeah. but um, but the, I, the, our own origin story is that we we said from the very beginning that we needed a four wheel drive ambulance. It's Conway, they, whatever, and their first set of ambulances did not include a four wheel oh. drive ambulance, and that that made it untenable to be. So, but. Um, well, it's it's I'm sure cost wise, it's probably probably more expensive. You know, it, it, it is. It is. There is a multi hundred thousand dollar per year payment. Oh, and that, so, would, that and that's just that's just rough so calculating back in the napkin. As long as it's viable here, and the pancake should do it. <laughs> but what can we do to get more EMTs? That's the. I mean, <laughs> Well, when, when when the one at the bottom of the hill has paid EMTs, it, yeah. Well, that's one that yeah. that you know. Anyway, yeah, three yeah, EMTs. I'm just bringing it up but, because somebody will bring it up. Uh, but and, in our defense, what the what our what our people say is that right now, because of the um, the, the the agreements that they have with the mutual aid agreements with all of our neighboring thing, we basically 
get the benefits of being in that organization right now without paying the annual membership mm -hmm. that they cover for us when we're not okay. available. Well, but, and we cover for them when they yeah. ask us, well, uh, which is which happens. And so that's. But it's an essential service you know, with this town getting older. It's just going to, it's not going to be any less. And, and Gemma and Chris, Chris in particular has crunched the numbers and says that this is, this is a much better, having our own still works for the town mm -hmm. financially, like in a big way. So good to know. Reserve fund. Yeah. Has been set at $40,000 year, since FIA 2018. <laughs> so <laughs> I wasn't sure if there's much discussion. And you can see how much I just put in what was expended so far this year. Um, I didn't look back and see what the big expenses were for the three prior years, but. Um, as you can see, we spend it almost all the ballpark number. And it's this is a year where it's you're it's painful to ask for, for to, to like this the stuff so, that comes yeah the, the, the stuff that comes straight from free cash is painful to increase right now. So I, I wouldn't increase it for if you want to think about reducing it to five thousand bucks. It's okay with me. Oh, yeah. My concern is that in a in a year like this, we may end up needing it. So that's what it's you know. Yeah, <laughs> the, the yeah. Yes, you're right. Might need it for um votes. Yeah. All right. So we keep it at forty. More or less. I always thought. I always thought this is one of those things that if if town meeting gets if town meeting gets ugly and there's people demanding cuts. Um, and you can't get your budget passed unless you cut something. This is a, this is a sacrificial lamb. But uh, rather short sighted one by yeah, yeah. Well, but, it's it's there in case you know. Yeah. Otherwise, you got to what? You got to yeah. call a town meeting or something. Exactly. Yeah. Which, which costs you cost the town eight hundred bucks or something like that just to do that. So, yeah. Veterans, five forty-three. Next one has gone down this year a little. These are the assessments that I've received. Of course, it's based on how many people in town. Um, so there's the operating, which has gone up just a, just a smidge. I did want to point out the flags. Um, I don't know, Phil, if you wanted to speak to that. Since so um, the flat the flags, we don't have a flag committee per se. We do have Daryl Chase and Brian um like yeah yeah brother uh that have been doing the flags on Main Street for since uh, 20 years or more. Um and they've always gotten a few don't they still have a few donors for the cost of that but um they're putting in a request for uh for street for for flags for the street for the first time. So the the amount that they're, the $800 request includes $300 for the cemetery flags and $500 for the street flags. And that's just replacing a handful of them, really. So. Um, well, they were saying that, the, you know, they see how it went after this year and replacing them and then see if they were going to. In other words, this wasn't necessarily in every year. Um, but there are quite a few flags that need to be worked And part of it is that the donors that have been, that they've are, have just always been doing it year after year after year and um, getting a little bit of donor fatigue. Um, and that it is a civic expense um, that. Is there a stipulation that flags have to be made in the US? No, don't, 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 please. Um, yeah, this was the question. I don't know. I don't know. Go, go ahead. Just open up some, open up some minefields while we discuss this. Well, in any case, the budget request didn't come. Yes, so I'm not opposed. Well, that's that's out of our control, of course. The, yeah, but actually, it's, not, it's, it's, uh, it's the request would be eight hundred dollars, and that would be up. no the overall. Budget. No, the overall. Oh, budget. yes, yeah. yes, this is true. 
This is true. And I think if I'm remembering correctly, there's about $600 in the special revenue fund. However, I think, um, I know if you've noticed the uh, missing in action flag is yeah. quite tattered and needs to be replaced. So things like that. that mm -hmm. And yeah. And I don't know if somebody wants to entertain the idea. Um, we're going to look into getting the Conway flag on a flag and maybe putting that on the pole as well and having one that we can. You talk about the one with our seal? Uh, the one that was yes. the quilted one that was made that's in the library. Oh, okay. and at the state house. Seal. seal is too kind of close. Right, right. No, it's not the seal, it's our actual yeah. town flag. Okay. Yes, our town flag. Which you can see on the website, one of the rotating pictures on the carousel. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, I mean, I, I, there, there has been somebody who spoke to me in opposition to the flags, and I, I don't know. I, I think that that is a, a minority view. Um, well, then you tell them they're made. In... But yeah, I, I just, um, I, I know that the veterans in town, that the flag thing is important to a lot of people. I also saw that in the town little census, the, the detailed census reports that we have, we have three times the average veteran population per, uh, in our state, we, we have like, it's, well, if, if, if we had the state average number of veterans, it would be 20 something and we have 70 something. Really? We got to compare it to other hill towns in Western Man. No. no further questions. No further questions. And then the last one would be the state assessments, which is um, which there's nothing that we can do about it. Well, that's not quite true because mosquito districts come in, in this as well, but we don't have to pay for it because we do our <laughs> we have opt out. out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are these final numbers or are these, no, these, these are, are estimates? Yeah. yeah, these are still, yeah. I mean, theoretically, we could pay these into escrow and sue to have them reduced to try to do something unique and different, but offer a few thousand dollars. What about, and, the, and what about the charter school? I don't think. Um, that is the, the separate charter school assessment is paid for um, 100 percent by the um, by, by the state right now, but there's many charter school costs are put, are in your frontier budget that you don't get to vote on. It's just something that has to be paid. Okay. That's what we're I see. Mm -hmm. So it's not in this budget, really. It's on the frontier. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And the school choice assessment is just for the number of Conway kids that are the, the handful that are going out of town. We okay. Right. Uh, it's, it's like six or something, I think, um, or not even. And the number of kids that are choosing into into Conway is um, like thirty times that. Really? Yes. Sixty kids. The, uh, oh no. Like no. Students from yeah. 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 Uh, well, we've always had. Not always. But it's, we're having to say no. We're, 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 we're counting on that. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're having to say no for a couple of grades. Really? Because they balance, they don't they can't do a major hire because of school choice. Okay. That's it for tonight's budget action. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, next week it's cash to school, to the school. So, and executive committee. And Arthur. And Arca, unless you want to table that. Yeah. Let's see. Um, one last mail item to discuss, and that the board of health regulations on private wells. And I uh, so this is something that we got, and I, to the extent that it's the select board, I don't know how you feel about this, but the uh, state is now. Uh, 
recommending or encouraging municipalities to require the PFAS, PFAS testing during transfer of property with private wells and with new well permits. It's not required, and there's no law that requires the Board of Health to, to adopt it from then. And I, I think I personally don't like this idea at all because it shifts the burden of fixing. It's, it, if any PFAS are found, it's the forever chemicals, the firefighting foam, but there's like 6,000 categories of these chemicals, and this only talks about one. But um, the, the, uh, right now, if a homeowner is buying a home and decides to test for it, and it, it comes up positive, then that's something to negotiate. If the seller has to test for it before they can sell a home, then, then that sort of shifts a lot of the burden of fixing it from a buyer to the seller, which is from a non-Conway resident to a Conway resident. Um, and and so if, if you own your home and you're selling it after 20, 30, 40 years or generations, and all of a sudden, like you're, you're, you know, you have to do a test and your home could become worthless. Um, then that's it should be it should be the burden of the purchaser from out of town to uh, to, to, to do tests of this nature and then to work out what they want to do if it, if it's positive it shouldn't be something that the town resident has to deal with in order well, to sell um, I will also say that you know we had um, the free testing that was offered and and no one anybody yeah. who did it did not find any PFAS so I'm not particularly concerned about. That but but we, did, we didn't have a lot of people sign up for that though. Did not we? a huge number. Yeah. No. Do you know no. how many total private wells got tested in Manhattan? No. I'm, I think I'm hundred bombs right now that because I remember who was. But but I, I since then I've been sort of I follow this issue when you know when it comes up in in different media stories and there um, there's a, a lot a lot of different types of these chemicals that these forever chemicals there's thousands of them and they're turning up all over the place mm -hmm. and it like things. That you didn't think, um, like Absolutely. a lot of our foods, like it's in a lot of our food, and a lot of our, you know, it's um, so it's it's one of those things that if they test, it's, if they do enough tests, they'll find it. they'll find it everywhere, right. um, and that it's just it's best uh, to, to me. It's the best practice to shift to keep the burden out, 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 on, on paying for the remediation outside of town residents as much as we can. So to me, that's keeping it the way it is, which is no new regulation. Um, well, in any case, it's, that's the, the purview of the Board of Health first. If they decide yes, they but it. hopefully they catch that little part that said it's not required <laughs> and they leave it at that. And if they are going to do something about it, they have a whole lot of hearings. And that because nothing gets people upset, like, the fear of them losing their lifetime investment. And that's what you're doing if you adopt something like this. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so with that, uh, town administrator update. Um, Anything? Great, <laughs> I read it. Great. Yeah, as long as you're up to date on the MVP thing, I'll, yeah. I'll report more on that later. But yeah, I'm very excited about that second program because the one thing I didn't say in here was that some of the MVP too that they're talking mm -hmm. about this new program. They'd be willing to pay for social events in town, which to me it's huge. Right. We could just people getting together. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. I will report on that after we. Next next meeting, March 13th. Oh, wait. Did we skip over select board comments? Oh, yeah. I only did. have one comment. It's not really right. concerned. I just do want to get another um, public hearing about the yeah. transportation. Right. Um, Calendar. Do we want to put that on next week's agenda to schedule the date? Yeah. Perfect. Very good. Okay. Um, when's the uh, so we we have the meeting tomorrow, which is the frontier budget meeting at six o'clock, and then there's another frontier budget meeting the following day at six o'clock, um, and but the one tomorrow is. The one with the public and planets. Uh, and uh, when's the caucus? The March 16th. March 7 o'clock. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, the uh, 
Hopefully we'll have the same. Hopefully we'll have the same select board after the caucus. Did you want to make a, a mention of that's um oh that that was behind or right in case somebody sees this before the caucus? Uh, if anybody sees this before the caucus, there's going to be a couple of spots opening up on the planning board. Um and uh which is a shame because right now we have a really high functioning planning board. No place for it to go with down in terms of quality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or plateau. We can, yeah, we can, we can hope for we, plateau. We, 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 we can hope for plateau. Um, so that's that's about it. Um, so make a motion to adjourn till March Monday, March 13th at 6 p.m. Same back channel, same back location. Second. In favor. Aye. Aye. Adjourn.